He's America working God. He's America working God. He is the Alpha and Omega. He is America working God. All right. Good morning, church family. Good morning. Good morning. And this morning, we're going to be going back to Psalm 37. We're going to start at verse 21. Last week, we did verses 1 through 20. And remember, the title of this song is, He Will Not Forsake His Saints. It's a psalm of David. And hey, for those of you online, like and subscribe. Give me a victory in Jesus in the comments. That helps the algorithm. And remember... In order to truly have peace, you must first have victory. And if your victory is in Jesus, your peace is eternal. Anyway, with all that being said, let's go ahead and pick up with the scripture. Psalm 37, verse 21. The wicked borrows, but does not pay back. But the righteous are generous and gives. For those blessed by the Lord shall inherit the land, but those cursed by him shall be cut off. Now think about this. The wicked borrow and they don't give back. How many people want to borrow? How many people want to take something? They come and say, hey man, you know what? I, I like that gift. I like that treat that you just got. Hey, I, I want some of that, man. I promise I'll pay you back on the second Tuesday of next week. You know, of course, they never have the intention of paying back. But what you got to remember is, as a Christian, when we give generously, when we loan out, we're not loaning what is ours. We're, we understand that everything that we have on this earth, God has given to us. And if God has given it to us, then, then we can share it with others and share his love. Because we know in the end, it's not about what we've hung on to. That's not what we get to keep. But in the end, we have eternal life. In the end, we get to inherit part of the kingdom of God is being children of God. And, and it says that God's going to give to those who are righteous the land. That you're going to inherit the land. Now stop and think about this. How are you found righteous? Only through Christ Jesus. Only because of what Jesus did for you. So if we believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins and rose in three days, then we know that in eternity, we're never going to lack nothing. It says, but hey, those who are wicked shall be cut off from the land. Those who don't accept Christ, who haven't found that forgiveness and never do, in the end, they're going to hell. And that's not God's intention for anybody to go. They don't have to. Anyway, let's pick up and continue to read. And Psalm 23, start at verse... Or Psalm 20, 37, starting at verse 23. The steps of a man are established by the Lord when he delights in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be cast headlong. The Lord upholds his hand. Now, I love this because it says that the steps of a man are established by the Lord and he shall delight in his way. Now, I got a question. Have you put your path, your trust in, in God? Have you allowed God's direction to be the direction that your life moves? Because God's going to take care of you. He's going to guide you in the right way. Anyway, verse 25. I have been young and now I am old. Yet I have not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. He is ever lending generously and his children become blameless. Now, I, I love this because it says that God's righteous, their children won't be found begging for bread. I'm going to remind you once again. There's only one way to be found righteous. And that's to truly, 
trust in Jesus Christ. He died on the cross for our sins. He rose again in three days. And if we believe that, if we accept that Jesus died on the cross and rose again in three days, that his, the one and only Son of God, that He paid for our sins, then He's going to guide us. He's going to take care of us. He's not going to let us go completely without. We may not have what we want. We may not be able to go out and eat at McDonald's. But think about this. He'll give you the food you need to survive. And it starts with putting your trust in Him. Having faith in Him. To, to have a life that, that's willing to live a godly life. Anyway, let's read on. Verse 27. Turn away from evil and do good, and you shall dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints, that they are preserved forever. And the children of the wicked shall be cut off. Now I love this, because it says, turn away from evil and do good. Now what does that mean? You know, Jesus paid our sins. He paid for everything. And if we accept it, we're going to heaven. But when we accept it, we're accepting that, that we're no longer going to live our old way. We're not going to live for sin. We're not going to live for the flesh. We're going to live for the Lord. That's what repentance is. It's to change. The Bible says in John 14, 15, If you love the Lord, you shall keep His commands. It also says in John 14, somewhere around verse 23, that if you don't love the Lord, you won't keep His commands. What are His commands? The Bible says you can roll all the commands up into two. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. And it says, hey, look. Turn away from evil. Do good and you shall dwell forever. You're going to go to heaven because you're truly trusting God. You truly accepted what Jesus has done. It says, but those who don't, then they're going to be cut off from the land because they're counted as wicked. And that's not God's will. As long as you got breath in your body, you have the chance to be able to put your trust in Jesus. It says, the righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Verse 30, Psalm 37, verse 30. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and his tongue speaks justice. The law of his God is in his heart. His steps do not slip. I don't know how many people I've ran into that says, hey, I want to tell people about Jesus. But I don't know what to say. You know what I love about that is if you truly put your trust in Jesus, if you truly seek God, that relationship, if you seek Him in prayer, God's going to take care of you. God's going to guide you. The Holy Spirit will give you the words to say. You see, everybody has a story they can they can share, a story they can tell. It's a testimony. What has God done in your life? What did He save you from? How has His love and His Spirit in your life changed you? How are you now able to be loving and caring? God will share every bit of this with you to share with people. He'll give you the words in the right time. Let's read on. The wicked watches for right for, for the righteous and seeks him to death. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be condemned when he is brought to trial. Wait for the Lord and keep his way. He will exalt you and in, to inherit the land. And you will look on when the wicked are cut off. Now, I love this. It says, wait for the Lord and keep his way. When you're talking about waiting for the Lord and keeping his way, 
What exactly does that mean? That means, hey, we were talking about repentance. We were talking about living for God, were we not? What does that mean? That means to make a change, to keep the Lord's commands, to love the Lord with all your heart, mind, body, soul, and strength, to love your neighbor as yourself, to no longer live for yourself, but to live for God. And as we wait on the Lord, it says, and keep his way, he says, he will exalt you. You know, when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're given the Holy Spirit. That is a gift guaranteeing your inheritance. And the Spirit will guide you. you got the mind of Christ within you. And, and it will help you grow. And God will guide you in His way. He will exalt you to make sure that in the end, you're found righteous through Christ Jesus. To make sure that you don't turn your back on God. And so... That's why that, that repentance, that heart that's willing to change, is important. It's not just something we speak. It's something we have a heart that says, hey, I love God. I love the Lord, and I thank you for everything you've done, Lord. Anyway, Psalm 37, verse 35. I have seen a wicked, ruthless man spreading himself like a grain laurel tree, but he passed away. And behold, he was no more. Though I saw him, he could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright. For there is a future for the man of peace. But the transgressor shall altogether be destroyed. The future of the wicked shall be cut off. It's the same point that we've been going through the whole psalm. There's a future for the man of peace. There's a future for the man that puts his trust in the Lord. There's a future for the man who lives for the Lord, who believes what Jesus has done for him. What is that future? We have eternity in heaven. When we die here on earth, God will let us share in the inheritance of the king. We've been adopted as children. But if we reject Christ our whole life through, then as John 3.36 says, if you believe in the Son, you shall have everlasting life. But if you believe not, God's wrath remains upon you. What is God's wrath? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Now what is that? It's not the kind of death where you close your eyes and you don't exist no more. No. It's the kind of death where you're separated from God for eternity. It's hell. And it wasn't created for you. It was created for the devil and his demons. You see, our loving God loved you so much. He paid a way for you. Jesus paid for your sins. And you got to be willing to accept it. And if you do, you're going to have eternal life. You're never going to be cut off from the glory of God. And it's not based on what you've done. It's based on the fact that Christ paid for the sins that you're guilty of. Verse 39 and 40. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. Have you been looking for God to deliver you from a bad situation? Have you been looking for God to bring you out of the, the torment and the troubles that you have in life? It says right here, He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in Him. Have you taken refuge in God? Have you put your trust in Jesus Christ? If you haven't, I recommend you do. Anyway, if you're wondering about that, I've shared a lot of verses about salvation through this message. But Romans 10.9 puts the simplest for me. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Your forgiveness was paid for on the cross of Calvary. It's time to put your trust in Him. If you haven't, start a relationship with Christ Jesus today. It makes an eternity a difference. Be blessed.